Um, welcome back to AAD 376 Animation 1. And we're going to do stop motion. So, what is this stuff? Uh, basically, it's a filmmaking technique in which objects where you physically move them in little bits and you capture one frame at a time. So when you, so it looks like it moves when you when you play it back. If you think of a flip book, which by the way I think I'm going to have do that as uh, project one now. Um, stop motion just uses physical objects instead of drawings. So, um, so this takes a bit of time, uh, 60 seconds, just depending because I use a, I, I use a program called uh, I Stop Motion and I forget how many frames a second it does, but if you use Premiere, which I'm going to talk about on Thursday, um, I'm going to be saying try three frames a second. Um, and, um, so that's, um, I mean, you try eight frames a second. And the thing is you, you put those together in Premiere and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll just talk about, uh, on Thursday, we'll talk about, you know, general, what I'd say digital construction methods about putting, you know, putting your, putting things together. The one thing that is super, super, super important with all of this is that, um, you know, just get a general idea, but, you know, just test every little, you know, like you do a little scene or you do a little testing, make sure to test it. Because the thing is, is that if you're doing something that goes for like 30 seconds and, you know, you've got some major issues, um, you have to, you know, you're, you'd have to redo a lot of stuff. So, so if you think about this, 60 seconds at 8 frames a second, you're going to do 480 frames. That's a fair amount. But, you know, if you do, if you do things in an organized fashion and you don't put things off to the last moment, this will kill you if you put it off to the last moment, really. Because it's like... Um, I saw a lot of students last night, you know, with uh, with our ball bounce uh, exercise, which is really something that if you were organized about it, you know, you could do in an afternoon. People had put it off for over two weeks, and I realized that we have a, um, you know, a lot of work to do, but it's always easier to do something a little at a time. So anyway, um, so... There's generally about six types of stop motion. I'm going to show you all of them. One is um, one is um, making movies. I mean, I mean, using objects. Uh, the other one is um, is claymation. Uh, the other one is using people. They call it pixelation, which I don't know why. But um, and then you can use uh, cutouts. And um, um, let's see here, uh, cutouts and then puppets and everything else. So that's pretty cool. So types, objects, and um, and then claymation, moving clay. Actually, one one. One project that's really cool is to take like a eight centimeter ball of clay and then over 60 seconds turn it into one thing, then have it morph into another thing, then turn it into another thing and turn it into another thing. That that's that'll be an option. Um, so um, a lot of animation programs do that. And then another one is you know this moving people. Another one is uh, cutouts, you know, using animation, uh, using um, illustrations. Uh, another one using uh, puppets, and another one is silhouette, which you've already done. So I, unless you really want to do that, um, I'm sure you probably had enough of silhouettes for now. Um, so let's take a look at what stop motion is.
<clears throat> Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just get this moved out of the way. And let's just get back to... In this case, we're going to be doing eight. By the way, as, some, as, a, as a really quick note, is that uh, when we get into 3D animation and doing character stuff, think about this, is that you can do character animation, doing facial animation, just with changing textures. You know, just change the face texture and that sort of thing. You don't have to do a lot of really detailed, uh, um, you know, like um, facial modeling and, and morphing and, and that sort of thing. All you need to do is just change, uh, change the textures. So that's where you can mix 3D and stop motion, which is really cool. By the way, we have Dragon Frame. We were going to use it if we were in the classroom. So there you go. So that's a few of these things. So um, remember, you know, with these things is that it can take a while as saying that a lot of times, remember, we're talking about things like on the ones, on the two, doing it every frame, every two frames, every three. I'm going to suggest doing every three frames, um, you know, having one image be three frames. So that's what they call on the eights. And if you think about, you know, why do they call it... Um, why can I do this, you know, math in my head really quick? All you're doing is you're just taking 24 and dividing it by on the whatever. So on the twos is 12, on the threes is eight, on the fours is six frames. So, you know, I'd say probably do it on the threes, you know, um, and, you know, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll show you about how to put, the, put these things together um, on Thursday. So, um, so depending on what you're doing, you know, there are certain limitations to certain, you know, each, each of these, right? So, you know, the, the physical nature has its own challenges. So let's, let's, let's talk about these.
Okay, so there you go on that one, and then um, so each of these, let's let's go down into each of these, okay? So objects, and this is probably the easiest you can do, um, and you can probably do this right around the house. It's not a big deal. So it's just basically taking objects and moving them around in the frame. And actually, believe it or not, uh, the other day I started um, doing some things with a teapot and uh, just as a test, and it was working really great. Um, so, um, you know, you can pretty much do what you want, and um, but you know, you just kind of have to create a story around like the personality of the objects and what 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 do they do. Um, so let's take a let's what let's watch let's just watch some stuff about this. That's pretty funny. So, you get the idea with that. I mean, that's just some really simple stuff. <laughs> anyway, that was pretty good. Okay, claymation. Uh, a lot of you probably know Wallace and Gromit and Sean the Sheep and stuff like that. And um, so, you know, it's clay objects. You know, you've got usually have wires in it, in it and you can get do some really interesting stuff with it. Um, so... And also, I think the, 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 the people who did Chicken Run also did, um, uh, also did um, Sean the Sheep. I think it was also Ardmore. So, um, so let's take a look at some of this.
So there you go. Uh, pixelation. Animating people, right? Um, you don't use it all the time because it's actually pretty tough because if you think about it, you're, you're, if you're doing like, you know, the woman in the bed, you know, you've got the, think of where you've got the camera. You've got it mounted to the ceiling. You know, that's crazy. So, you know, you usually have to have like a Bluetooth shutter and all that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, you usually what you wind up doing is you usually wind up having a Bluetooth shutter and you see it on your TV, on your, on your phone. And, you know, it's usually a little more technically, um, advanced. Um, but, um, anyway, and then the other thing is, is that you're either dealing with actors or you're dealing with friends and, uh, um, you're dealing with uh, the amount of patience either one of them has with you. And uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, uh, my friends only have so much patience with me. So, and uh, that's it. Ask, ask those around me. <laughs> so, um, but let's, let's say there is that, um, but you know, the other thing is that if you want to be doing things that are really acrobatic, you know, don't have a 70 year old, you know, if you want to, you know, it's, you know, you're dealing with characterization, you know, so, but it, uh, if you're, if you do this, you know, it can be really cool. So let's take a look at, at some of it. Okay. So that's, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. Um, this too, although I think that uh, we're going to get a little far, far ahead on, on some things. But, you know, that's pixelation using, using your hand. That's pretty cool. That's actually really cool. Because all of a sudden, you know, there's, you know, using the sense of perspective, do some really crazy things. So, and guess what? That's a minute. And then that's that. So uh, I'm going to stop this real quick. Um, okay, stop that. Let's get back over here. So cutouts. I actually really think this is beautiful stuff. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, you know, 2D pa pieces of paper, ah, but, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, this is actually kind of animated illustration. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, this is uh, sort um, actually, I'll put in the chat later, there's actually one that I like a lot uh, that's really, really obscure called Thomas and Nardo. Um, but um, it's this sort of, it's this sort of thing. Um, the issue is, is that, you know, you got to make a lot of artwork, you know, um, and I think that's the issue with, I think that's the issue with, um, stop motion in general. You have to think about 
what you're going to be doing and what your artwork is going to be, you know. And that's that I think is uh, that's a that's kind of a big issue. Um, so here, and let's let's just go back to this. Um, there we go. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then puppets. Actually, this is uh, the, the video I've got for you on this. This is really cool. Um, puppets and claymation are really similar. But the thing is, is that they're not necessarily the same. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, you kind of have like clay puppets and claymation. So, but the thing is, is that in, in puppet stuff, um, you know, you can have, you know, these, these, um, uh, kind of like these magnetic solid things. It's like, you know, if, if you ever seen, um, I'll try to put some links out for some things like, uh, what is it? What's some of my favorites? Uh, Frank and Weenie and, uh, Vincent was pretty good and, um, try to put some things out there for you. It's, uh, um, Doing marionettes, you know, like puppet puppets with strings, that's actually pretty hard. Um, but the thing is, is that puppet animation is, is, is pretty common. You know, it's like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas was a cross between, um, you know, kind of difference, a cross between claymation and, and puppeting. So it's really much more puppeting, but it's, it's um, you get that idea. So, um, The thing is, is that a lot of times, um, you know, you, you've got, you know, actually the thing is also, had we been in the classroom, I would have also possibly had us do things with the, uh, with the, with the body cleans. But um, what do you do? You know, and that, that's, that's puppet stuff. The reason, you know, you're saying, Professor, why are you talking about the, the, the body coon marionettes? You know, well, the thing is, you know, you notice that, you know, they had these things like with, with holes, you know, and, you know, things that would hold them by the waist. These are called rigs. And the one thing you'll see in the next uh, animation, I mean, next video, in professional uh, stop motion um, for puppet animation, all the puppets have tons of rigs and they're constantly changing them around um, just to, to keep the puppet in place and to... Um, because sometimes, you know, you've got a puppet that's kind of holding in midair. And, and so many of the puppets have holes in their backs and little places for mounting rigs and places for screws. And, you know, you, sometimes you, you don't think about that. And um, it's, um, it's actually really, really interesting. And so the thing is, is that if any of you were kind of feeling any, any, any sort of frustration with the with the little rigs or thing, that sort of thing for the for the for the um, for the uh, mannequins, they're totally professional. You know, uh, this it's a, they exactly use that sort of thing in, in, in professional animation. So let, let's take a look, okay? This is super cool. Hey, by the way, that's something that's pretty cool. If you think about it, you know, you could do you could you could do your animation with origami, which would be really cool, like make paper cranes and little people and fish and things like that. So that would be really cool too.
See that? That's you know the external rig. That's just like our 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 our, Mary, our um, mannequins.
So this is really important. So that's actually, that's, that's actually pretty cool. So wet stop motion, you know, you already know this. Uh, here's, a little, here's, here's a little thing here. But this is kind of interesting. This is, this is pixelation and in silhouette. So this is why I picked this. So that's pretty beautiful. Um, so, okay. So we've kind of gone over stop motion and kind of what's, what sort of different things you can do. The one thing that I also want to go in, want to talk about just real briefly is that we haven't talked about, but objects and puppet and, you know, kind of the intro, you know, the stuff in between, um, Legos, right? Um, you know, Legos are really, um, you know, really widely used for stop motion, and um, and I really recommend it. I mean, I had a couple senior projects over in Milwaukee in the United States that uh, that were um, Lego, uh, that were Lego projects, and they turned out really well. So, um, if you want to see some of that stuff, I think I've got some of it. I'm not sure, but um, I'll try to get you some stuff. So, 
there are just some things you're going to need. Um, if you want to use a camera, I mean, I will show you how to get, get I, I think, if you want to use a camera, and the other thing is that uh, um, if you want to do that, I'll show you how to put the images together in Premiere on, um, on Thursday. And uh, otherwise, for the most part, I'm going to do a project with you. Um, as I as I've decided that I just I'm just going to do now, um, but I use my iPhone um, and a tripod. Uh, I use iStop Motion, which seems to be working really good. Stuff, uh, various lights in the stage. So, camera. As I said, you can use a single lens reflex, um, and that's fine. And um, you know you can bring things into Premiere or After Effects, but um, you know right now actually the cameras I mean especially if you've got like an iPhone uh, iPhone 11, um, you know with the new ca camera stuff or the new iPad, that's just great. Um, I use um, I stop motion. It ran me about uh, 35 dirhams, so um, yeah, unfortunately. You know, probably have to get a couple things, but it's you know, but it, it worked out very well. Um, this is the tripod. Uh, this is actually my wife's tripod. It's a uh, Mi Photo uh, 100. It's um, it the thing on the front. It has a little uh, has a little Bluetooth uh, shutter control on it. I've tried it out. It works great. You just uh, pair it to your phone. You fire. You start. Um, you start uh, um, I stop motion and you just use that like your uh, like your shutter and it works great. So um, I really can't recommend that enough. Um, stop motion app, as I said, you know, you can there's there's about five or six of good apps out there, but I've just been using I stop motion and it's been really good. Um, you can also do music uh, composition onto it, but what I'm probably going to recommend is trying to get the uh, you know, working in landscape and then bringing it into Premiere and editing, editing it together. So, um, stuff. Toys, clay, food. I mean, one thing we were talking about here was like um, using like um, using things like um, you know, like cake frosting or eating a sandwich into a shape or um, things like that. So that's kind of a that's that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, so keep going back to the videos, um, and I'll try to get some more examples up for you. Lights in the stage. You're no way about this because you know what you're doing with objects you're gonna have to have, a, have to have a little place and it's usually better to make a little stage so see if um, you know at, at, at your family's place you know you can for about a month you know clear out a spot you know you can you can draw or paint a, a stage or whatever and just get your stuff and uh, the thing is is that what I like is uh, you you know you can just get little reading lights from around the house Bless you. Is that and then um, you know I actually uh, IKEA makes little uh, LED uh, reading lamps and I I love those so um, actually back at school we have a whole bunch of those but anyway that's that uh, but get yourself make yourself lights in the stage and really just get yourself set up think think about your stuff and really as I said I'm showing all this stuff now where we're while we're getting stuff finished up. And, um, you know, the due date is on the midnight of finals. And that's it. So, hey, the brief. The, um, the theme, 60 seconds of fun. I know that sometimes you guys like being told what to do more, but in this case, I think I'd rather have you be experimental. So for 60 seconds, 8 frames a second, just try to be as experimental, crazy as you can for 60 seconds. 
make some titles for it. Go nuts. Um, Sham, what 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 do you um, what do you need more work with? Ah, okay. You know what? Well, think about this. Is that um, Hang on just a second. Well, think about it this way. Um, this is why you have a month. So as I said, you know, in, the, in this week, start collecting stuff, start thinking about things. And, um, you know, we'll probably, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about putting stuff together in um, After Effects, and then I'm going to get you a whole bunch of things on cinematic lighting and camera shots like yesterday, okay? And this is going to be, honestly, this is going to be like, um, this could be like outside reading. I'll give you, I'll give you videos on it, and um, I hope the content will all be okay, but the thing is, is that some might be Western films. Uh, but what happens is, is that um, I want you to get like get up to speed really quick on basic lighting and um, basic camera shots, and I'm going to give you stuff to look. I'm, I'm going to give you stuff to watch. Um, so, um, right at this point, going to stop motion. We've got a month, but there's just a bit of stuff that's a bit of a fast learning curve that I want you to uh, see really fast um, just so you've got it in your head so it's there's a tiny bit of a learning curve so I, I apologize for that um, I don't really but I mean it's just the fact that it'll it'll help you a lot if you get just some basic film theory down really fast as far as like shots and things like that um, And then next time, for for Thursday, uh, finish everything else up, and get your get your idea and get your stuff together. And basically, we're gonna be um, I'm gonna be giving lectures on stop motion and doing uh, sound effects and shots and really cinematography and and you're just gonna be working on things. And I'm gonna be talking about animation and cinema and all these things and that's how we're kind of do, gonna do it and then it'll be due